What's up guys, welcome back to another video here on Muddy Beards 4x4. Today we're gonna to be doing four or five upgrades to my car trailer that I tow my Jeep with, so stick around. Okay guys, I apologize ahead of time for the road noise because I cannot do this inside the garage. I am outside in the driveway working on this. So let's go out and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Start off with, this is a Summit Alpine Series 7K trailer, 16 foot deck. And uh, I bought it brand new two, a little over two years ago and I've literally done nothing to it, nothing. Uh, besides, I don't even think I've washed it. So today was one of the first times I've actually cleaned it, washed it, and got it ready to start welding on and working on. The only issue that I've had at all is this little end cap, plastic end cap with the light on it fell out and broke. The light is fine, but I ended up replacing this piece right here, which was only like $3 on Amazon. So no, not a big deal. So to get started, we are going to add trailer jacks to the back of the trailer. Moving on, we're gonna be adding the spare tire mount. And this is actually for the jack up in the front there. And we're going to be installing a Badland ZXR 9000 winch Harbor Freight to the front of this, which is why I have my old winch plate, which is all bent up. So I'm gonna try and fabricate, make something out of that to mount the Harbor Freight Badland winch. I'm also gonna be adding this trailer tongue box for storage, painting up all the kind of rust spots on the these ramps on the trailer, all the little spots that are rusty on the fenders, kind of all the way down. I'm just gonna go through the whole trailer and hit it with the Rust-Oleum uh, semi-gloss black just so uh, to clean it up so the rust doesn't continue to get worse it's all just surface rust it's nothing actually rusting through anything but I want to keep this trailer as nice as possible as you can see I've taken pretty good care of it it's pretty nice still being two and a half years old and it looks fairly new still so I want to continue to keep it looking and working like new as long as possible so the first thing I'm going to work on is this 5k uh, jack so this is going to get installed on the back of the trailer it has a weld on piece that goes that's going to go about right here so that way this can go right here and then swivel up when not in use to like that and out of the way so it's going to be fairly simple i'm going to cut this off a little bit mark where this is going to go and then uh, tack weld it on, make sure everything is good to go, weld it on, paint it, and should be good to go. Okay, this side is all done. I'm just gonna hit the inside of this with a little bit of grease so it'll spin on this easily. And we'll throw it on. I'm just gonna use this bungee with the little ball on the end to hold the crank from flopping down. It's not a big deal if it goes down because it's not gonna hurt anything, it's not gonna hit anything, but just be nice to have it up. Okay guys, that's it for this side. Time to go install the other side. So why are you putting jacks on the back of the trailer? Let me tell you. When you drive your vehicle, Jeep, whatever, on the back of that trailer, ramps, no ramps, 
it's gonna lift up the front of the trailer, lifting up the rear tires of your tow vehicle. Loading it this way puts a lot of stress on the trailer and on your vehicle. And over time, it will actually bend the frame of the trailer. You all have seen older trailers where the trailer is no longer straight. This is why. Yeah, Blockbuster, I would like to see if you have any of the Matrix DVDs in stock. No, not VHS. No? Can you check the return bin for me? Awesome. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm just using my new Olight flip phone flashlight work light thing to order a Blockbuster video and maybe a pizza time. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what happens. Obviously, this is not an old Motorola flip phone. This is a new flashlight from Olight. I've been using them for almost two years now and I love them. I use it as a work light in the shop. I use it as a duty light at work. And if you wanna support our channel, and get a discount, 10%, using the code in the description. Also use the link in the description, it'll take you directly to the website. Anyways, back to the video. So I'm gonna walk you through the plan for the winch. So starting at the truck, cause I'm not gonna run a battery here, cause I don't wanna maintain a separate battery. How often I'm probably gonna use this, which is probably not very often, I don't wanna run a battery, I don't wanna have to charge it, I, I want it to work when I want it to work. So I know the truck battery is always gonna be good. And I can hook to that. So we're starting at inside under the hood. I have this battery disconnect switch from my Badland Apex winch that was supposed to be on my Jeep. Never installed it because I've always just ran them straight to the battery. So we're gonna run from the battery to this cutoff switch, which will always be off unless I want to run the winch, obviously. So then from under the hood, we gotta run a cable all the way back to the back of the truck in order to plug the winch into it. Um, so I found this jumper cable 20 feet for I think it was like 18 bucks on clearance at Big Five. This is significantly cheaper than any other. Just straight buying the wires was going to be like three times as much. So we got our battery cables here. I'm just going to cut these off and then we'll have a 20 foot cable which is plenty long to run from under the hood all the way down to the back to this connector right here. This is one that I got on Amazon, I believe it was $11. So I'll wire this cable onto one side of this and then the winch cable onto the other side. I'm gonna end up using this mount. It is very bent and it looks like it's bent only kind of from the center out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop this main section out and it's gonna go end up on top of this rail right here. I'm gonna make a plate on the bottom right here to come out basically the same size as the top plate and then make uh, either tube or square tube mount from the top to the bottom to kind of tie it all together into one big piece. Hopefully that should be strong enough to pull pretty much anything I need to onto this trailer. So I got my mounting plate all cut up exactly how I want it. I'm marking it on the trailer where I need to grind, where I'm gonna be welding this. And then I need to select a bunch of pieces of scrap metal. I got tube, I got plate. I'm gonna be reinforcing the back of it, the sides, everything. So from here on out, it's just gonna be cutting up, measuring and welding on, cleaning up and painting. Uh, so it should be pretty straightforward, just kind of building it off of this main plate putting in reinforcements where I see that I can put them in, that's gonna make them strong, and uh, let's get started. So here is the setup. We got a quarter inch plate down here, welded to the frame and to this uh, pocket right here. And then this is inch and a quarter. It's not even DOM, it's just schedule 40 tube inch and a quarter. Don't think it was necessary to do any DOM or anything. So I have two of these on the back side. And then this is fully welded here, fully welded here. And then I added some bracing here in the front, quarter inch 
all the way down to the frame on this side and then the same on this side as well. Working on the connectors, this battery side is super easy. Just used one of these battery connectors like this and it presses really nicely into the vise. And then I just stuff it full of rosin core electrical solder and it's good to go. Hit it with some heat shrink and it looks like this, good to go. These connectors on the winch side are another story. They are turning out to be kind of a pain. I've been having to use the 20 ton press to actually smash this down. And then again, I'm just heating up this whole piece and filling it full of the rosin core solder all the way into here to hold it together. And then again, heat shrink. Two and a half more of these to go. And then I'll show you all the wiring all done. Here's the setup for the trailer. I got my wiring all done. A little bit of an extension on here to extend it out so it'll meet the truck but we got the connectors done and this should be plenty long to make it to the back of the truck and then this is actually the cheapest winch cover i found on amazon i think it was nine dollars and this will go on top of that it fits perfectly uh, just wrap the wires around on the top here put this cover on and it'll hold it all in and uh, this should be good to go uh, we're gonna have to hook it up to the truck to test it and uh, let's show you the truck we got our negative here our positive is here running to our battery disconnect switch right here which is currently off I can just flip this on and I have 12 volts at the back of the truck flip it off and it is off no voltage to the back of the truck there's also I put in the 50 amp breakers that came with the winch and our positive cable that I made goes down and it runs the whole length of the truck. I zip tied it all up nice and tidy all the way down. And then it's gonna be connected right here next to my trailer hitch wiring. So all I gotta do is just plug this in, turn my battery switch under the hood and have the truck running and the winch should be good to go. Another thing to think about is having a quality spare tire mount and having a good condition spare tire. Now, I've had a spare tire for this trailer the whole time that I've had it. I got it at a uh, secondhand tire shop and they found a rim that worked and found a tire that worked, put it together for me. I think I spent 60 bucks and it's just been laying in the bed of my truck. So I finally get in out of the bed of my truck. Super easy to install, it takes about five minutes or less. So I'm not gonna spend much time on it or any other than right now. So let's move on to storage. Now, another thing that I'm gonna be adding is a trailer tongue box. This is a Harbor Freight tongue box. This is about 115 bucks at Harbor Freight. I got this uh, from Nate's yard for 20 bucks, no lock, no key, uh, full of rust. So I completely cleaned the whole thing out, sanded it down, painted it with the truck bed coating, and I got a $2 latch that I can use a $6 master key to, to lock it with. And I had to buy some U-bolts to bolt it down to the trailer. These were about three bucks a piece and then uh, about five bucks in paint. So total into this box, I am $40 into this uh, storage box. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna store in this yet, at least spare straps, spare parts, jacks, who knows? Uh, you know, once you add more space, you're just gonna fill it up with stuff. So that's probably what's gonna happen. Okay, got the trailer hooked up, the truck running, the winch is, should be good to go. I got my controller here and it is connected to power. So I just need to go turn the switch on under the hood. Should have power back here now. Everything is all wrapped up. Uh, a couple things I wanted to show you. I was able to take a four x four cap, plastic cap, and put it over here. I was gonna weld the plate, but this is a better option because when I bought it for the back there, I had to buy like a pack of eight for like $8. So I had a bunch of extras. So I just put this right here. And you can see I got my multimeter and my electrical stuff out because this connector is not 
connecting very well. I had to basically pull it all the way out and just barely touch the ends for it to work. And so I ordered a different set of connectors for this. I'm gonna have to redo that. Also, as you can see here, this negative cable broke off of the connector here. And that's my fault. I didn't have the proper crimping tool to crimp it down properly. And then I, like I said, I stuffed it full of solder and it got really brittle and this cheap wire, it just broke it completely off. So I'm gonna be redoing that. Um, I was able to get it to work just to test it and it does work, um, but I'm gonna have to replace this connector and hopefully it will have a better connection and this will uh, get crimped on a lot better. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned and got some ideas of stuff that you can do to your trailer to upgrade it, to make it a little bit nicer, more usable, and uh, make it worth more money and not having to spend a whole lot of money. So I really did not spend very much money at all. I will put the total up on the screen that I spent because I don't know what it is right now, uh, but I will put it right here for you guys. Make sure you check out our website, muddybeards4x4.com. Click the links in the description for all of our uh, coupon codes, discount codes for all of our sponsors. Buy some shirts, stickers, stuff like that on our website. And again, I will put most of the stuff, all the stuff that I did buy on Amazon, I will put into a store for you guys down in the description as well. So check that out. Until next time, guys, we'll see you on the trail.